All right, hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to discuss the other half of the order block entry equation, and that is um, entering in on a stop order. So in a prior video, I had mentioned that when the market forms an order block, which is um, an opposite colored candle that price displaces through, basically it's an algorithmic turning point. So could be one candle, could be a series of candles, uh, could be one the first candle in the series. So for example, these two black candles here, when the price displaces higher through them, those two candles collectively are a 10 minute order block, but just the first black candle is a five minute order block. So it could be the whole sequence of candles or just one candle. Um, the order block stop entry is a good way to enter the market on a stop order when the market, you, you have a feeling that it's gonna move too quickly for you to enter in on a limit order. So the limit order stop entry would be entering in at the low uh, of a bearish order block or at the mean threshold of a bearish order block or the high of a bullish order block or the uh, mean threshold of a bullish order block. The stop order entry is placing a, an order above a candle that you know if the market displaces, meaning moves with a purpose through this candle, then that candle would be an order block. And these sorts of order block stop entries are very prevalent, guys. So you have to be careful with overdoing it. Um, you have to really discern in which direction the market is drawing. Um, like, for, for example, we see right here that one minute candle actually is a bearish order block and you could have entered in on a stop order and it did draw lower. Yes, but obviously that's very counter to the uh, intended move. So you got to be careful with entering in on stop orders. You should be pretty confident that you know what the market, where the market is drawing, or if you're accepting that, that you're only going for a scalp. So order block stop entries, um, they're everywhere. They're very common. And what you want to do, if it's a, if you feel like a candle or a series of candles, if the market trades above the higher low of that candle, I mean really the order block is formed at the open or close of the candle, but you enter in the stop one tick above the high. So for example, we see the high of this black candle came in at 653.75. We put a stop order in at 640 evens and you are triggered long and then your stop would go two points below that low right there. Um, similarly, every time that the market has been retracing tonight, stop order entry, stop order entry, um, you even had a, an example of a bearish stop order entry or stop order entry. They're everywhere. Um, it's simply putting a stop order in uh, above or below an opposite colored candle that you are confident if the market displaces through this or this candle or these series of candles that should be an order block. Um, and it's the other way that you can enter in on an order block that is not a limit order entry. So some more examples here, here, here. Uh, other than entering in entering in the order block on the limit order at the mean threshold or the low, a stop is a good option, especially for a fast moving market. But like I said, there are so many of these entries that you need to be pretty discerning with which ones you're choosing. Um, you don't want to overdo it too much if that makes sense. So anyways, guys, this has been my discussion on entering in order blocks on stop orders. And essentially, like I said before, you are entering in on a stop order on a candle that you are confident would become an order block if the, if the market trades through it in the opposite direction. Okay, and you enter in on the stop order and then the, the stop for your trade, you enter in on a stop order, but then your actual stop uh, goes above the higher low uh, by two, with two points on the NASDAQ, adding in a little compensation. So all right, guys, in this video, I discussed entering in an order block on a stop order.